so I'm working a gig in Boulder. Well, actually, I'm just right now. I'm getting getting ready to get my car fixed so I can leave, and so I have to come up with some money and get it ready to travel. I guess, but. I'm in Boulder, Colorado right now. Just sitting, kind of resting because I driving all day. But the reason I'm posting this video is because I was wanting to talk about uh, what happens economically when foreigners come in mass numbers the way the Mexicans have and the South Americans from across the border. And even a lot of the Asians, you know, have been coming here for a long time in, in greater numbers than we can really sustain. What happens when they come illegally or illegally in, in greater numbers and our economy is, is really uh, able to sustain. To, to maybe a Catholic who hates American people who aren't Catholic or um, a foreign European, you know, maybe that's fine. Or some of the, the people who can get rich from them coming here That might be okay. But basically, when they come, okay, so we have how many trillets? Oh uh, gosh, I'd have to stop this. But I'll, maybe I'll do that in an, another video. But we only have, I don't know the exact amount right now. So I was going to look it up and, and show the fact, the figures. The exact amount of money that is printed. Is just the bottom line. That's all the money that we have printed. And the fact that you know money should is a is a, a symbol of economic value. There should be a real accurate way to you know scale or way to, to measure our value as a nation. But I don't, you know, I think it's too deceitful right now. They're pulling money out of thin air. And because of the way our markets work, you don't know the real value of any product because they can just price, they, they can price things a million dollars if they want, but if people don't have that much money, they're not going to buy it, so then they wouldn't be, they can't sell it. So it's like kind of like art, you know, they can, an artist can draw something and say, okay, that's a million dollar piece of painting. So we don't know what the real value of anything is. You know, our country is even that way. Houses, values come and go. And it's all deceitful. So then they they deceive everyone and people like Biden, everybody else, oh we can pour we can more, we can they can come here to our country, we can afford so much, we just take out loans, we just print more money. That makes the Mexicans so worthless to us that our money has to become of less value for them to be here. And then when they come here, we only have so much money. And when the money goes to any, that's less money that goes to the rest of the American uh, people who are natural born American. Whether it's Asian or Mexican or whoever, right? Foreigners coming here in mass numbers or European. So every American becomes poorer we don't get money 
we lose money when they come here. And except for some of the people they bribe, you know, everybody else is getting poorer. And that money go, is going to the Mexicans and they keep it in their communities or the Asians. So it all gets divided up into communities of people who are alienated or un-American fighting to take over communities. And then there, there's, there's only so many jobs always. The Mexicans never seem to actually create jobs. There was never any much need except for some of the agriculture because people weren't trained, you know, like after the tractor was invented, a lot of people didn't want to work in agriculture anymore if there was no need for them. But that's kind of goes to where how innovation uh, creates an illusion or makes it really harder. As we, we, they, they come up with all these products to make life easier, but in a sense, it makes things a lot harder to understand. And, and, and the jobs become so make-believe, the real work demand is hard to determine. And the government prints a book out called Workforce, like 20... 23 or whatever. Um, I Last time I read it was back in like when Clinton was president. So it was workforce something. But um, actually, and I think that was like a prediction. It was a book that was printed for like the year 2000 and it was in the 90s so I don't know it's like a 10 year prediction and what that is is the government's whatever they whoever researchers had come up with are um, what the work demand and workforce entails so you know, how many people are working in this field like computer industry how many people are working in agriculture how many people you know stuff like that and it talks a little bit about it, it goes into details of it it's not a real big book but it, it doesn't go like explain it all completely but you know it just kind of gives a statistics some data and what I would say is you know it would have to start with logging, agriculture, mining and whatever government work entails uh, especially military to defend the country you know we need so many people to defend the country and sometimes that changes. We need more. We need, we need less. Depending on global, global situation there, security, all that stuff. Politics, what other militaries are doing. And... So that's kind of the work demand, you know, the primary thing. Kind of like how when, uh, you know, the seasons change and stuff, uh, the birds and the animals have to work to do. You know, they got to harvest for winter and store up their nuts, the squirrels and all that stuff. And, you know, that's the real work demand. We got to do a similar thing. Those, those are the real work demand. And then we... They, Every cave, I, I'm, I'll do that in another video, but it's like these people come up with these business plans, innovators, entrepreneurs, and the government's come up with their plans. And then that determines the, what work's going to, you know, is it people, people are needed 
to work, you know, people need the, those people to work on their stuff. Government, of course, is going to be a more important thing than a lot of the innovative stuff, but not more important than our primary because we would have no revenue. And a lot of the primary, the Mexicans come here and want to be the workforce. But the thing is, it's not their primary workforce that they, there was no need of one Mexican, maybe. Because it's the Americans who needed that work done. It wasn't their work to do. It's like, you know, people don't have to... People are free here. Right? And we can choose not to work on it. Somebody get, so somebody draws up a business plan for an ice cream shop... The whole community could just say, bull, we don't want to buy this guy's ice cream. We don't like it. Or maybe we don't want to work on it. He's not paying enough. What happens is, not only do the Mexicans... See, that's how the wages and, and people have say in whether they're going to work on this made-up stuff. You know, because it's make-believe. But it's not make-believe that they're American and that it's their country. The land and the, the government and the rights and the freedom and the money. Must come here. Oh, it's you know. We'll do it, and, and it will work two for one. So then, that's a threat to the wages. So not only do we have to, does does a, there less money available? The wages. He, things that people didn't want to work on, they work on it. So that people become, get money and from the employers from hiring these Mexicans, paying decent wages, and get to be an employer because they can employ a Mexican. And, and unjustly, the justice to that, you know, that. At least whatever power people had out of it. So then, so then, then those people who can get rich from hiring Mexicans want more of them to come, and then persecute the people who didn't want to work on those jobs in their communities and in, and using in the state lobbying and everything else. So the Mexicans make the life a lot so much harder for the Americans. Without a war, they invade our country and do that. American people, are they going off murdering everybody? No, but the Mexicans sure are murdering the Americans as much as they can. So, whatever worthlessness is, and they call the devil, it's like Belial or Beliar, which means the worthless one or something, or the cruel one. And, um, but I, I'm pretty sure it means worthless one. And, and, this is one of his names. And um, that's what Mexicans end up. No matter how valuable they are to themselves, they're very worthless to American people and to, to our real economy. And um, the houses, there was less houses available. There would be no homeless people, probably, except for real hobos, right? who just choose to live that way, like to drink and won't sober up. And they, they, they're not building houses because of greed. And, and if they did, we'd have to use our resources to tear down our trees for these Mexicans and, you know, destroy the land more. Asians but our middle class is going away because the Mexicans 
came here. There's less money available. They needed more money. And to print the money, that then the, then the dollar's worth less. And, and all the jobs that, you know, I mean, they build so many Mexican restaurants. Every city that they're in is just flooded with Mexican restaurants. There, there was hardly, American never had that many restaurants. So the restaurants were always earning like top dollar. And, and now they're, they're earning crud because of these, uh, these foreign people, you know, in their foreign restaurant, foreign food. You get a whole bunch of Americans to go along for whatever reason. They just, you know, they see the food there and they'll eat it. You know, and they aren't even Mexican. They realize what they're doing is supporting their people. I mean, those guys get rich and they have this like Catholic aristocracy they start building because they're from a Catholic countries that are totally different. They never realize how they're different that way. And a very un-American. They start stealing from people, stealing jobs, and 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 making life a miserable hell. Just tickled to death, not even caring. So I just want to say, you know, I mean, uh, the reason our economy is so bad right now, for a lot, a lot of it is Mexicans and Asians and foreign people and, and their children are born. And this, it, it's just so un-American that American people are hurt a lot by it. And our country is going to, it's really, you know, a lot of, we're working on a lot of stuff that maybe Americans really wouldn't work on. The products would go away, just like you know. You know, I remember when we were manufacturing; their products would come and go, you know. But now it's so hard telling because all these foreign people, you know, who what they would work on or buy or do, it's just not the same as an American would. You know, they work for less wages. It's always been a threat.